Hi, how you doing? So welcome to One Image My Edit. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create an analog image. So this is an image that I have manipulated within Lightroom to try and match Portrait 800, which is what I used to shooting a lot back in the day of analog film. So I used to use that all the time and I loved the warm skin tones that it had to it, but it also the uh, the, the lovely hues in the green spectrum and the yellow spectrum. So I've been playing around within Lightroom and I think I have almost got it perfect, dare I say it. So this is my end result, the one on the right, you can see the original image on the left. And you can see we've got the lovely red and yellow tones within the skin tones there. And also the greens are just creeping in, which is what they used to do within the within the shadows. They used to just creep in ever so slightly in the shadows. And yeah, I've managed to get a really, really nice effect. So I'm gonna show you how to do this yourself. So I'm gonna reset this and I'm gonna walk you through the process of what I've been doing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come to the tint at the top and I'm just gonna bring that down to around minus two, just a little bit we're gonna start just bringing in that white balance into that green spectrum there. I'm also gonna bring the exposure up only a little bit though, because what would happen on the negative is that sometimes I would underexpose and then during the processing stage, I would just lighten that. So I'm just bringing that up just to really mimic that, that image style. The contrast, I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast there because it is a little bit flat because it's digital image. So I'm gonna to go to around plus nine, plus 10, only a little bit. Highlights, I'm gonna bring them down to around minus 20, 21, around that area there. Same with the shadows, around that area, maybe a little bit less. So let's go to minus 19. I think that's quite nice there. So they kind of sit there. And just bringing down them highlights and shadows just flattens it a little bit. And we're gonna do the same with the whites and the blacks. So the whites I'm gonna bring down to minus 21. And the blacks, I'm gonna do that a little bit more. So minus 29, because I just wanna darken them blacks. You can see what that's doing. It's just darkening them, them blacks a lot. And that's what's gonna give us that little bit of extra contrast within them two shades. So moving on then, I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity just because Portrait 800 did give you quite a little bit of clarity and separation between the different shadows, uh, tones rather. So the vibrance and saturation, I'm gonna push the vibrance up a little bit, only to around plus 12, plus 10 around there. And the saturation, I'm gonna take quite a bit out. So I'm gonna to go to sort of minus 40. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm trying to mimic that Portrait 800 look but also I'm trying to mimic the really kind of crappy paper that we used to print on because that was, it was, it used to give a really, really nice effect. Even though the paper wasn't the best paper on the planet, the end result looked really, really good. I used to, I used to love it. I used to like it. So that's why I brought the saturation down a little bit just to try and mimic that paper. Now I'm going to do some, some work within the tone curve and I'm going to play around with the colors, but I'm also going to, adjust the grays, the whites and the blacks in this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the whites in. So by doing that, I'm just matting them off a little bit. And also I'm just starting to tell Lightroom that the whites actually start a little bit further in. So that's just gonna brighten everything up a little bit for us. Then when the grays are here, I'm just gonna push them up a little bit just to lift them grays up ever so slightly. I'm gonna add a point here on the blacks and then mat these blacks off quite a bit. So I'm gonna drill them up to about there and just tweak this ever so slightly, just bring that down a little bit. There we go. So what we've done there is, is we've, we've pushed the whites in to start here, to start a little bit further in. And we've just pulled up the mid-tones of them whites there just to brighten them and then really matted off that black end there. And that gives a really nice look. And if we look at the before and after just on that, you can see that there's quite a lot that that tone curve has just brought to the table. So it really, really does help with the overall appearance of the shot. So let's go to the reds now. And what I'm gonna do in the reds is I'm gonna pick a point here where this 
histogram is just starting to creep up there. I'm just going to push that up a little bit. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to map these, these black areas off in the red. So I'm just going to push them up a little bit. So that's going to give us a real nice matte look. And maybe just bring these down ever so slightly. There we go. It's about there. That gives a really, really nice look. Then I'm going to move on to the greens and I'm going to bring the greens, the top end of the greens down a little bit into that red section there. So the whites, the highlights, I'm going to bring into the red spectrum, but only a little bit, just a tiny amount. I'm going to isolate the black areas there. And then with this area, just map off the end ever so slightly, just a little bit there. So that's good. And then we can fine tune the amount of red and green you can see just that little movement does a lot so depending on your image and depending on what you prefer will be it's entirely up to you really if you want to go more into the green or more into the red i'm going to keep it more into the red because the portrait 800 did always used to give me that look it's probably because i wasn't very good at processing the film in the dark room so it, <laughs> everybody else has probably got a different result than what i have so in the blues i'm going to come up to the just below the midtones here i'm just going to pull them down so we're adding in a little bit of yellow there and then i'm going to pull that yellow up on the black here i'm just going to mat them off so this is going to give us a really really nice effect and you can see what's happening with them yellows so i just want to bring them up a little bit there so it's not as severe there we go that's quite nice so that's looking good so if we just look at the before and after from that tone curve you can see we're creating a lot of a lot of atmosphere and color within that tone curve so it just shows you how powerful the tone curve is so let's go to the actual hsl so the hue saturation and luminance and what i'm going to do is just bring the red and the oranges down i'm going to bring them down to around minus 30. so i'm just taking the sting out of that red and yellow because I don't want it to be too overpowering. And the saturation, this is where the majority of the work's gonna, gonna happen because we're gonna play around with the colors a little bit here. So the reds, I'm gonna push up to around plus 40 around there. I'll keep it around there, so 38. The oranges, I'm gonna push them right up a little bit higher, around 70, 71, around there. The yellows, I'm gonna push them up there we go so around 31 32 that's quite good the aquas i'm gonna uh, the greens actually let's pull the greens out let's push them around to about 23 24 that's quite good and then the aqua blue purple magenta we're going to pull them down as well the aqua i think about the same maybe a little bit less 19 around there that's quite good and then the blues pull these out let's go a little bit higher so i'm going to go to 31 purple 35 36 that's quite nice and then the magenta about the same there so what we're doing here is just really stripping them shades out there there we go so you can see what we've done with the the, the saturation we've just boosted them reds yellows and oranges up and just put all the other colors down a little bit and that just helps get a really really nice vibe to the shot so let's go to the luminance and let's just make these reds a little bit bright only probably about plus eight something like that orange let's push that up plus 38 that's quite nice yellows plus 14 15 around there that's quite good so if we look at the color correction that we've done there again you can see what we've done we've added in these lovely warm skin tones so we've brought some life back to them skin tones and again depending on your image you might want to bring this down a little bit. Okay, so it's many of the oranges within there. There we go, that's better. It just brings a little bit of life back, doesn't it? So that's looking quite good. So let's go to the color grading now, the next thing. And this is really, really simple. What we're going to do, we're going to work in the shadows. And I'm going to push the hue. I'm going to find, I'm going to find, I reckon, it's going to be a nice green. So it was about, I think I'd done it originally about 108, 107. That's one of my favorite kind of colors there. So let's go to 108. And then the saturation, let's just bring that to plus 11. 
I think that's good. That's quite nice. And that just gives us a, a, yeah, a, yeah, a green tinge to them shadows, which Portrait 800 always used to give me. And just to even that off, I'm going to push the balance up to around 26, 27. There we go. Just push that up there. And again, if we look at that, you can see what that's done. It's just helped blend everything together, hasn't it? Them, them oranges and yellows and greens are now really sitting comfortably together. Um, so it looks really, really good. And then the next step, we can we can sharpen the image. I mean, it's always a good idea just to sharpen it. So let's just go plus 10. I think that's good. Noise reduction, because we have been working on it, plus 10. And same with the color. So just a little bit, just so we can correct that color correction there. There we go. That's quite good. And then I think the next thing we want to think about is grain. So we can add grain to this to really mimic that, that film look. And again, depending on what you want to achieve, will come down to how much of this you want to push in. So I originally put in about 25. Okay, so the amount of 25 and then the size of that grain was 25 and the roughness I kept at 50. And that is, in my opinion, about 800. It's bordering on 1600 ISO, uh, analog style. Um, but it's been that long since I've shot analog. I've kind of, my eyes have got used to pixels. So uh, if that is off, then you'd have to forgive me. But it looks around 800, I would say, uh, bordering 1600. So it's around there. Um, and I think that's that's pretty darn close. Um, and again, if we look at the difference that that actually makes to the image, it's quite a lot. It just really pulls everything together. Um, if you look at the tones up here in the beard and the skin tones and in the top, you can see that it just pulls everything in together. So that's it. That's how you do it. It's really, really that simple. So like I said, this is just something that I've been messing around with and... I do feel that it is that kind of portrait 800 look. And you can see I've pressed the Y key, so that gives you the before and after. And you can see it's it's looking quite good. Obviously, we can then come back in here and tweak anything that we want. So them skin tones are looking a little bit bright. Then we can just push them up towards the blue. Um, you're going to do a majority of the the adjustments within this blue and yellow tone curve here and on this on this spot. Uh, just to really refine it and I think yeah about there is quite good that gives us a lovely analog style shot so that's how you do it so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that gives you something to do yourself on your images if you want to create that, that lovely portrait 800 look that we used to have um, then that is what I recommend you do so I'll look forward to seeing your images when you've done this similar edit and I'll see you in the next one Take care. Bye-bye.